So the next thing I want to do is, is put a couple of stubs out here to pick up the uh, fascia pearls. I'm just going to change this to, say, uh, SHS. Let's put in, doesn't really matter, let's go 65 by 5. I'm going to base it on the center point. I'm going to go for two points because I have nothing to snap it to. So I like uh, an origin there. And I'd like to come down to about the midpoint of there before I start drawing. So that looks good. And I want to come out uh, probably about there with my SHS. So you can see that uh, you can see that really simple and friendly to, uh, to to put that sort of stuff in. And what we can do is we can um, um, we can copy those along. So just going to come over and grab them. I can several ways that I can grab these. I, I just grab them by the ends of the construction axes. There we go. That's fine. So we just copy all those down. Okay. So that just leaves us, the last thing left to do is to hook these up. We're going to use the mplate command to do that. Just simply come down to our object. Now what it's going to do, before I just select this, I'll explain it. It's going to remember the last connection used, which was the mplate there from the rafter to the column. So it'll try and put that guy in here as well. And don't worry about that, that was the last one used. So we can either change those settings in here, or we can go and... Uh, select from a template which I, I have available here so um, that uh, it just jumps back to uh, to to the right settings that we need and from there we can just uh, simply run through here and select our other ones carefully and starting to get a few bits and pieces on top of each other there so that all hooked up nice and neat that looks good all right, the final thing that I might like to do is uh, let's divide these guys up. So I'm just going to use the standard Pro Steel modify command and uh, I'll divide them up with a 5 mil gap. So I'm just going to grab my two, grab my two faces there. There we go, grab him. And it's going to ask me what I'll do, you know, where would I like to divide these up. So I'm just going to grab that middle grid uh, B and uh, divide them up by grid B. So if I go and have a look there now, uh, you can see that, uh, if I just spin that around for you, you can see that it's got a nice little gap there. That, uh, that looks spot on. Okay, next we better divide and lap up our purlins. So I'm gonna come to my custom tools here. I've got a purlin lapping tool here. And we just simply run around and select the purlins that we like lapped over of course you can grab this by window or crossing as well but I don't want to grab the wrong ones that looks fine a couple there I missed by the look of it okay lovely all right so I'm going to Accept that, and it's going to ask me where, what is the line that I'd like my lap at. I'm just going to select the center of grid B. That looks fine. And let Pro Steel run through and lap and drill all those. After we lap and drill all those, I'll just check one. That looks pretty good. Yeah. Um, the next operation will be to put all of our uh, pearl and cleats in. So we'll go to our pool and cleaning tool. We'll run through and we'll hook all of those up. So you can do this in, in several operations. That's our fascia. I probably don't want to grab him. Spin him around just to make it a little bit easier, just so I can see what I'm doing. I 
the reason I'm grabbing both sides is I'm going to hook this whole building up in one hit. So. Run through and grab all those guys. And I want these little guys on the end there too. I'm going to hook those guys up as well. There we go. So that's fine. And then I just nominate what I want to hook those guys onto. So I'm just going to grab all those structural columns and rafters. There we go. Looking good. Grab that guy. Yeah, got all that. That's good, except that. What it's going to do now is it's going to run through and it's going to connect all of those guys up. So, you know, there's a fair bit there for it to do, so it'll take a couple of seconds. It should uh, happily run through there and hook all those up in a second. Now, the last thing to be hooked up to those actually was the floor joists, I think. So let's just see what it's going to do there. Just check one of those before I finish the command. Yeah, it's picked the right one. That looks good. Pretty happy with that. All right, and that's just hooked all those, hooked all of these guys up here, which just leaves us our open end bays here. So I'll just come down to this end. I'm going to leave that other end open just for now, but we can we can finish off this end here. If you remember rightly earlier, we uh, we were going to just uh, use the ProSteel automatic tools to put purlins across here, uh, girts rather, across here. But um, I just want to show you how easy it is just to be able to essentially, you know, freehand in steelwork. Um, ProSteel is really friendly with this sort of thing. Um, so what we're going to do, I'm just going to tell ProSteel to, to match that existing shape and um, match the properties of it. So... Um, uh, you don't have to go and fossick through the list, so to speak, and try and find it. And all I'm going to do here is I'm just going to, off any nominal point, I'm just going to just going to put a little piece of uh, of Z in here. I'll rotate that around. That looks fine. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sort of put this into into position. So essentially. Really, what I want to do is I want to move the back of this, if I can kind of make it easier for you to see, I'm going to move, make the back of this 10 millimeters off the bottom of that column. So at the moment, I, I sort of pretty much have no idea where that sits at the moment. So um, it, it's very happy for you to, to, to move stuff around so I can sort of grab the, grab the end of that and uh, match up. The location of it and um, then I can I can move it but I can tell it look I only want you to sort of I want you to stay in that plane but uh, let's go um, from that point there I want to come out uh, 10 millimeters so and uh, I can tell you that's um that's pretty much spot on now Just going to uh, drag this guy through here, do the same. There we go. And uh, I'll drag that guy through, just grab his grip and move him, snap him to there. There's occasionally uh, in the wireframe environment like we're in now, it makes it a little bit easier to do that work. So that's the, um, that's the finished, I'll just uh, switch that back to transparent modeling. So that's the, uh, that's the end result that we've got there. And um, I, I can tell you that that works really well on site. So um, all we need to do now is uh, you can copy these from sort of any location you want. Let's, let's sort of just pick the underside of that and um, tell it I just want to lock to that plane and just, just come up and, and snap to the underside of there all the time. There we go. And I'll fix those other guys up in a minute. All right, I'll tidy those ends up in a little minute. Um, there's probably no need for you to watch me do that. But the final thing, I just got to put um, some girt cleats on that. So using the purling connection, just run around and we'll grab those girts. There we go. 
And that should have popped those in there nice and neat. Which it did. We'll need to put some bridging in as well. Within my tools here, I have a little bridging function. It's it's based around the uh, Metrol Hook Lock 2 bridging. And um, let's put a couple of rows here throughout. So I'm just going to choose some roof bridging. Select the upper. Select the fascia. And just grab, just to just tell the software what objects I want to run between as support members. So Now, although it's going to look a little bit different to the uh, picture that I showed you at the beginning of this presentation, I would like to show you that, that this model is still fully parametric at this stage. Um, so, you know, if things need to update or change, it is, it is very easy for us to do. These beams here that run through the middle of the building, just, just for the example, what I'd like to do is uh, I'd just like to grab those guys there and uh, I'd like to move those out of the middle of the building, say, uh, uh, let's go uh, four meters uh, over here. Let's just place them up this end uh, of the building. And um, what it's going to do is it's going to move all of those connections that I put in, keep all the cleats all right on the right sides and so forth. So uh, just to show you that everything is still absolutely parametric. Uh, if anything needs to update, it will all update the way it has to and the way that you would expect it to as well. Going to put some floor joists in between this member and this member. Back to my templates and I'll make those 150s. You can see just with a few user settings and saving them off as, as templates that are specific to your projects. You can make it very quick and easy to run through and call them up later. So it's running through now, placing all the floor joists for me and uh, putting in connections in for those as well. It'll just take a couple of seconds to do that because there's a fair bit of work there for it to do. As you can see, it's placed all those little 150s in and uh, hook them all up as well. There's a couple of stair commands. This one's my favorite. And I like to place mine just out here in space, just, just till I get the parameters of it correct, and then I, I take it into the structure. So, and what I can do is once I sort of get this, get the basis of it correct, uh, it's just a simple case then that I can I can move that in sort of from top of steel through to top of steel. So we'll place that uh, maybe uh, let's just go maybe a hundred millimeters just for the argument. hundred millimeters just off to the side there. That looks fine. The only other thing I'd probably do is, uh, at the moment, by default, that puts that in as, as grading. You could sit there and, and say, maybe I want to put timber or something across the top here. All right, we're almost to the end now. So I'd like to put some handrail in here along the edge of my beams and uh, just cover up this opening. There's a couple of different ways that we can add handrail to our structure. Uh, firstly, we can add it to a polyline or smart line that goes around our structure. The other way is to select individ individual objects as well. We can do it that method as well. Okay, so that's our construction line through there, a little guy. And what we're going to do, we're just going to tell ProSteel that we want to put a handrail along that. So we select that smart line and we're just going to get it at the moment to put in the basis of the handrail for me. So you can just, it's, it's starting to get pretty busy this little model now, but you can see that it's, it's dropped in the, the handrail there the way we want it. Okay. And we can manipulate this. This is parametric. So the other thing we can do is uh, we can drill and bolt it later as well. So, so that's that type of handrail. 
the other type of hand roll that we've got is we've got the we've got the type where we can actually select the object. So I'm going to come up and out of my hand roll selection, we'll choose standard hand roll this time. I'm just going to pick my objects that I want done. So I want that guy and uh, that guy there, and uh, put it in. And uh, hopefully it'll put a type P up on top there for us as well. So which is uh, looks like it's kind of done. Not a bad job there. Pro Structures is an amazing little package and uh, very quick and easy to use. Very user friendly, fast to learn it, very accurate models. Um, the ability to collision detect and so forth, so we don't get collisions. Good uh, bills, materials, NC data, so lots of good quality deliverables from this. I'd like to take the opportunity to thank you for sitting down with me and uh, having a look at this today. My name's Adam Smith. I'm the owner and operator of Master Drafting and Design. I'm also the channel partner for Australia for Pro Structures. I'll look after this product. If I can help you in any way, please get in contact with me and, and let me know. Thank you very much for your time and you have a great day now.